Welcome to The Short Score, your weekly update of rope and news from around the industry, where you can find the latest on the sport from the pro rodeo ranks to the jackpot world. I'm Taylor Vollen, and I'm your host. Happy Saturday, ropers. Welcome back to The Short Score. It's your host, Taylor Vollen. So on today's bonus Rope&.com tips episode, because I know y'all know the drill, I have a clip from Patrick Smith on how to heal the dummy better. Patrick kind of talks about the basics, things like angles and positioning on the dummy, and he also explains how to feed your rope for maximum efficiency on the heel side. Now, don't forget that you can actually go and watch this video when you sign up at Roping.com, of course. This is also a perfect time to remind you guys that Patrick has a new instructional video coming exclusively to Roping.com next week. Stay Driven, his newest video, will be streaming exclusively, like I said, on Roping.com, and it drops next week over Thanksgiving break. Stay Driven is one you are not going to want to miss. It's very unique to any other instructional video out there. It focuses on the team component of the sport, an element we all know is often overlooked by ropers of every level, and it uses never-before-seen camera angles and video technology to kind of better deepen viewers' understanding of the sport. Once you get done listening to this episode, make sure you go and join Roping.com if you aren't already a member, not only so you can watch today's episode, but so you can be prepared for when Stay Driven releases next week. I'm going to talk to you for a second about feeding your rope. When you're learning to feed your rope, and I know the majority of you probably already do that, but there's some of you out there that probably don't. It's something that's very important to do because it gives you more control uh, throughout the entire run. This is the size loop that I start with. And you'll see right here that I have enough slack between my hands that I can completely extend my arms out like this. But when I get done and I'm ready to throw my rope, right there is the size loop that I would throw you'll see that I've only got enough, that if I put my hand in the center of my chest, I've only got enough slack to extend out one arm. So I took all that slack out. And the purpose of that is two things. If I just back in the box with a loop the size that I like to deliver with, this is how big of a loop that I've got to worry about. It's hanging out here where it can catch on all kinds of stuff uh, and get you in a bind if you're not careful. And the second thing that it can do is slow your first swing down and your momentum of trying to get everything going. You can hit your horse in the head. You can, you know, it's, it's looking for a lot of bad things to happen if you've got a loop, loop that big to start with. If you start with a smaller loop and you just feed it out, well now I've got complete control of my first swing. I can just pick it up. I can keep it tucked where, you know, at a lot of the rodeos, there's a calf rope and pulley on this side. And if I've got a big loop hung out there, I'll hang it on that or I can hang it on my horse's stirrup or even on my horse's back leg, they can step in it. I've seen that before too. I've done that before. But if you have your loop like this, where it's sized down and you keep it tucked up where there's nothing can get caught on it, not only is it out of the way and it's safer to leave the box, but now I've got a quicker first swing where I can pick that rope up and start it. Then I can just feed it into whatever size that I want. It just makes it a smoother process from the time you leave the box getting that first swing up, you have more momentum uh, carrying into your first swing and getting ready for your job. All right, I'm going to talk to you about the sawhorse itself and the dummy like this. Like I said just a few minutes ago, this is a great tool for working on fundamentals and foundation of your roping, but it's also a great tool to start bad habits. And you got to be careful. Anytime we're roping, we can develop bad habits if we're not roping correctly. A couple of things that I've seen when people rope dummies like this is we're told to swing over their back. You know, this is where you want to swing on a steer, right over the middle of his back. Well, you can see the angles right here. I'm standing on the ground. This dummy's up pretty high. So look how high my tip has to be for me not to hit his back. So I'm creating muscle memory right here of my tip being too high. So one thing that I like to do, if I'm going to rope a sawhorse, I like to put my tip down like I'm going to rope on my horse behind the dummy and just step into my throw to deliver my loop. The reason for that is, if I'm gonna stand here and rope this dummy 25 times, I wanna make sure, first thing I think about, where's my tip? Is it down? Is it square? Pointed at my target? I don't want it up here, high, in a bad position, where it's that much further that I've gotta bring it to the ground. Now, if I was sitting on a horse and roping this dummy, it'd be completely different, because the angles would change, and I'd have the angle I wanted to swing right down over the back, 
But again, muscle memory is very important. You want to train yourself correctly if you're going to rope these dummies. The second thing that I think about when I rope something like this, position. A lot of people get to roping these dummies and they'll stand over here on this side of it and not ever even consider their horse's head. If you're standing right straight behind the dummy and your horse's head's here, you're not going to be able to see it. So make sure you're focused on a correct position to where if you were sitting on your horse, you can clearly see both feet. The next thing that, I'm, uh, that I think about, I've got my position, got my tip pointed down right where I want, is gonna be my delivery. I'm gonna make sure that when I throw, I'm gonna get this bottom strand all the way down under the right leg. Sometimes I like to draw a line outside this right leg right here and focus on setting the bottom strand, this part of my hand, down at that line and letting the momentum of my swing carry it across. Again, bad habits are created or good habits are created when you're roping these things. Don't get caught up in this little number right here where people are stepping back and everything's falling back in your delivery and you're pulling your slack. That's an easy thing to do when you rope these dummies. I like to be deliberate, make sure that I'm swinging nice and smooth, my tip's pointed where I want it, I'm in position, and when I deliver, I stay there for a minute. Make sure my hand is in the correct position in my delivery. My loop completely finishes. Look at it, see if it's what you want. Then I'll grab my slack, step up and pull my slack if I want to. Okay, when I rope a dummy like this, like I told you, I'm either creating good habits or I'm creating bad habits. So it's very important to have some steps that you go through. Position, swing, tip, the angles, and your delivery. First thing I think about, I'm gonna get in position. Make sure I'm to the left to where if I'm on my horse and his head's right here, I can clearly see both feet. Second thing, make sure that my tip's down, pointed at the target, okay? A lot of people say, what's the target? Okay, we're trying to rope the feet. I've seen, uh, you know, when people rope dummies, steer horns or something like that, the, a lot of people have different opinions on where to look. The left tip of the horn, the right tip of the horn, or the center of the head. Pref I prefer, I kind of look right down here towards the right hock, but I'm able to see both feet in my peripheral vision. I want to be able to see the entire thing, but the most important thing is, is that I have my focus down towards the hocks so that I have, you know, have my eyes down, my tip down, and I'm looking at my target throughout the delivery. It's a very easy thing in healing to get caught up looking at the steer through the corner and never focus on the feet. You get caught up in the back of the steer, looking at the back, and then right before you throw, you shift your eyes and your focus down and try to bring your delivery. In order to get the most out of a dummy like this, it's important that you go through these steps. Think about your position. Think about where your focus is and where your tip is. I'm looking at that right hock right there, right where that leg bends. I'm gonna point my loop. I'm, in, I'm to the left where I can clearly see both feet if I'm on my horse. I'm gonna make sure my swing's open, square, not down over here and not too much over here but right at my target, okay? Tips down where I want it. I'm gonna make sure I just take that loop to the leg. I like to finish my loops completely on these dummies. If you're gonna rope a dummy like this, get everything right, throw your loop, and let your loop completely finish. Look at my hand position, still up and down. Never lose contact with your rope. You know, I've seen this a lot right here too. People learn to leave their loop alone, but they do this right here. And then they just step back. Now my hand's down here, I'm creating bad muscle memory, bad habits. You don't ever want to lose contact with your slack. Go through those steps, tip down, angles, focus on the feet, completely finish your delivery. I never lose contact with my slack, but I completely let my loop finish before I even touch it. And then I get my slack. Good habits are created by muscle memory and doing things right one step at a time. Again, I think these dummies are good for little fundamentals and working on a foundation, but don't spend too much time doing this and trying to make your loops prettier and prettier. Get your fundamentals correct and move on to something that will help you with your horsemanship, your timing, and all the things that go into a team rope and run.